Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna Show. I'm Dr. Deanna Holgren, your host. Join me weekly as I cover various health-related lifestyle medicine topics that you get to request. This show is for anyone who wants to proactively improve their health position. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna Show. I'm excited today to share a little bit of information with you about weight loss. I know that everybody just finished Thanksgiving. I've got some tips for you at the end that might help you save a few pounds through uh, Christmas as well. And uh, I'm excited about this topic because I think that for a lot of people, weight loss is such a challenging thing. When I think about the top five things that I get asked in my practice, always weight loss is one of them that hits the the top list. And today I'm going to talk about weight loss pretty much for everybody, but especially for people who are over 50, that over 50 crowd, because it does kind of become a little more difficult to lose weight then. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, a few things that that may be new to you, maybe not. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about insulin resistance, what that is and and what you can do about it. We're going to talk about a ketogenic diet and we're going to talk about intermittent fasting as well. So let's just jump right in. So first of all, um, insulin resistance, you may be asking, okay, what is that exactly? Why is it that people have trouble losing weight? And this is really the the biggest issue in my mind as a physician. It is estimated that over 50% of the population has either prediabetes or diabetes. And then there's even a greater percentage over that that has what's called insulin resistance, where their body's just not functioning right and they're not responding right to the insulin that is being produced. And so you might be asking, well, what is insulin? And insulin is basically just a messenger hormone that tells your body to store fat, okay? So it is the reason that we store fat. Insulin is at the the core of fat storage. Well, what is insulin resistance? Insulin resistance is basically when the cells in the muscles, the fat, and the liver stop responding to the insulin. Uh, Because they stop responding to the insulin, your body produces more and more insulin, and And you basically have a high circulating insulin level. And again, that causes you to pack on fat and you're not able to burn fat. And we all want to burn the fat, right? So what can we do about that? What makes a difference? And that's really what we're going to talk about today uh, is how to basically increase your metabolism through a ketogenic diet as well as some intermittent fasting that will help address the um, the insulin issue. So when I was in med school, I can remember learning that um, you know blood sugar was basically something that you had to be concerned about if you were diabetic, if you were pre-diabetic, or even if you were hypoglycemic, where you suffered from frequent low low blood sugar. And I really thought that for the rest of us that it didn't matter, uh, that we didn't really need to be concerned about blood sugar. Well, as it turns out, the foods that we eat, um, you know, a calorie does not equal a calorie. That's another fallacy that I learned in med school is that calories are equal. They are not. Um, So some calories will spike my blood sugar, therefore causing my body to release Uh, an excess of insulin causing me to pack fat. And then some calories will normalize my blood sugar or not cause an elevation in blood sugar at all. And then my, my insulin levels are not increased because I don't need them to be increased. And then I'm not storing fat. So a calorie does not equal a calorie. I could eat, uh, you know, 1500 calories of, uh, let's say soda that's loaded with high fructose corn syrup, and I'm going to gain weight. Or I could eat 2,000 calories of a diet that is not going to spike my blood sugar and I won't gain weight, okay? So a calorie does not equal calorie. One of the things that I share with my patients when I'm trying to get across to them this this concept of ketogenic diet and making the switch, it can be hard because we are so accustomed to eating grains. We're so accustomed to that pyramid that you're taught in school uh, that is loaded with all of these grains. And the thing that that came to my mind is, you know, when you think about the cows and you think about grain finished cows or grain fed cows, well, in a sense, that's what we've become. We've become grain fed here in the U.S. as well as we've consumed more and more higher quantities of grains every year. Oftentimes, those grains are, of course, loaded with chemicals, things like glyphosate, artificial sweeteners, artificial flavors, artificial colors, all of that stuff, which continues to derail our health. 
So what is the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting and how can that make such a difference for you? So the ketogenic diet is basically a diet where you are kind of flipping the grain diet on upside down on its head. And you basically reduce carbs. You cut carbs down to anywhere from 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. And I know that that can sound really restrictive, but I promise it's not when you get the hang of what to eat and what not to eat. I typically recommend 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrates for people who have a normal metabolism. They're not really struggling with the insulin resistance issues. They are not pre-diabetic. They don't have any other problems. But if you're that person who has insulin resistance or pre-diabetes or even type 2 diabetes and you are really trying to make a change from your diet standpoint and want this to work for you, then I would recommend cutting your carbs to 20 grams of carbohydrates per day. So by doing this, you are basically keeping that insulin level low throughout the day. And the thing you have to realize is that insulin, you know, not only is it the fat packer, it's a growth hormone, uh, but also if you look at the typical diabetic out there, take a type 2 diabetic who has been placed on insulin because they've not been able to control their diabetes either through diet or with medications. And what you'll find is that they typically gain on average about 10 pounds every single year. Well, 10 pounds in a year may not seem like much, but diabetes oftentimes is a lifetime disease. And so as that adds up, you can see 10 pounds a year per year per year. And before you know it, you know, you've packed on an extra 50, 60 to 100 pounds and they feel miserable because of it. So what we want to do is turn that around and basically help lower those A1Cs, help lower that that circulating insulin level and release fat, basically start burning fat instead of sugar. So when you're eating a lot of carbs, you're basically burning carbohydrates, which turns into sugar. Or when you're eating a lot of sugar, you're burning, again, that that sugar. So we want to turn into fat burners instead of sugar burners. When you think about diet and you think about what's essential in the diet, If you've noticed, the things that are essential are actually essential fats, okay? We have to get those from our diets, um, like our omegas, and then essential amino acids as well that we have to get from the diet. Our body can't make it. But if you notice, there are no essential carbs. They don't exist. And so, again, carbohydrates are overrated, and we just really need to reduce them, and it makes a huge difference in how you feel and how the body functions. So let's talk for a minute about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a tool um, that can be used to help you reach weight loss goals, but it's so much more than that. It's not just about weight loss. It's also about autophagy which is how our cells basically clean themselves or how our body sort of detoxes. And so intermittent fasting to start off, you know, I've always told all of my patients that at a bare minimum, everybody should fast for 12 hours every single night. Fasting for 12 hours, again, makes your cells more sensitive to the insulin that your body is producing. It helps to detox the body, helps to cleanse the body. And basically, we were meant to fast at night. That's why we call it breakfast, because that's usually when you're breaking your fast. Well, intermittent fasting pushes that envelope a little bit further and takes you to maybe 16 hours of fasting or even 18 hours of fasting and sometimes even longer. And from what I've read in the literature, it appears that autophagy, which is that whole detox process, that cell cleaning process or cellular renewal that is built in, a built-in mechanism for cellular renewal in our bodies, which is incredible that we have that, but that typically starts after about 16 hours of fasting. It's really not that hard to do. When you think about the fasting, you know, really you're going to eat dinner, okay? And then, you know, that might be 5, 6 p.m. Don't eat anything after. And then you don't break your fast until usually around 12 uh, or even 1 o'clock the next day. And breaking your fast with uh, a healthy uh, protein shake is a great way to go. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, breaking your fast with just really nutrient dense food. And then what happens is you're going to end up eating all of your food for a day in approximately a six hour window. And again, some people will, will move that on either side, but that's the basis for intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting combined with the ketogenic diet, in my opinion, is the best way for people to drop pounds, reverse insulin resistance, get their body back on track, and to be able to uh, see an improvement in, in so many other areas of their health. 
a lot of foods have a glycemic index listed. And a glycemic index, if you're not familiar with that, is just a number that tells you, it's a number from zero to 100 that tells you how likely is this product, how likely is this food to increase my blood sugar. And typically, you're going to want to stay with foods that are really around the 30 and below mark. And there's a whole list out there on the internet that you can find on glycemic index, and that can sometimes help guide. But remember, it's not just about the glycemic index. It's what happens after you eat the food. I mean, yes, it's going to spike blood sugar, but when you look at the next two hours, what does it do uh, to your blood sugar there as well? And so some people will even look at an insulin index, which is rather new. Uh, I recently read some research uh, out of Indiana University, and uh, it basically was dealing with diabetics in a ketogenic diet, type 2 diabetics in a ketogenic diet. And the results that they got were incredible. Not only were they able to come off of many of the medications, but they lost weight and they felt better, and it made a tremendous difference in their overall outlook in life as well. Another thing that you're going to want to do when you're doing a program like this uh, is basically uh, some exercise. You want to add in exercise. And I always say to get at least 10,000 steps every single day, it's really important that we get moving. We have moved into this sedentary sort of lifestyle that's you know, that, that really doesn't serve us. So we need to move more. And again, a great goal is at least a minimum of 10,000 steps a day. You get out there, walk, breathe some fresh air. If you like you know, other forms of of exercise, that's fantastic too. But the key is basically just to get moving. And then the other thing that I want to point out with this program is when you are doing intermittent fasting in a ketogenic diet, it's really important that you not snack in between meals or after meals. And the reason behind this is that when you do eat, you are going to see an increase in insulin levels to some degree, and then that's going to come back down. Uh, When you snack in between meals, you are basically raising that insulin again, and you're kind of doing this yo-yo thing. And so it's better to just avoid those snacks altogether. A few tips that I like to give out, especially during the holidays, and if you are just off of Thanksgiving, I'll tell you the best thing you can do right now is fast for a whole day. You will feel better if you fast and get moving. It'll make a tremendous difference in your energy level and even how well you sleep. But basically, a tip that I like to give before going to an event, a holiday party, a gathering, whatever, I typically will have a protein shake, a low glycemic index, low carb, low sugar protein shake that basically will will fill me up so that I am not not tempted by a lot of the things that you typically will see at an event like that. And if you do fall off the wagon there and you eat too much or overindulge or whatever, again, the best way to reverse that, it is simply to fast the next day, immediately jump back on that wagon. Let me talk for a minute about protein shakes. A lot of people don't realize that whey protein, which is often found in a lot of protein shakes and powders and so forth, whey protein actually will spike your insulin level. Uh, It's going to cause your insulin to go up, which again is going to cause more of that fat storage. Pea protein is a better option. And pea protein has a smaller insulin response than whey protein, mostly because its breakdown and utilization by the body is slower. So that's going to be a better source. And fortunately today, there are great products out there that are available that will help you with because they are low carb and they are low sugar and they're just easy to implement into your day. Whey protein is counterproductive for weight loss. It's going to spike your insulin level, as I mentioned earlier, and it's going to spike your insulin level faster than white bread, believe it or not. So low insulin must be maintained so that the body is not storing more fat. You can only burn fat in the state of low insulin. If you're eating three to four ounces per serving of protein with one to two cups of green vegetables as your main meal, uh, cooked with coconut oil, avocado oil to add flavor and satiety, then that's really the the best thing that's going to help fuel your body and give it what it needs. You want to make sure that you're eating nothing out of a bag, a box, or a drive-thru window. Those are the no-nos. No bags, no boxes, no drive-thru windows. After a few weeks of following this ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting, you'll find far less aches and pains, better sleep, and fewer cravings, and overall improvement in your health. 
Before you start a program like this, I want to encourage you to check with your doctor. I am a doctor, but I'm not your doctor, probably not your doctor. And so it's always best to check with your doctor before starting a program like this. I hope you've enjoyed the show and I invite you to ask questions. Go to DeannaHoldren.com and fill out the page, send me a message, ask a question, and maybe your question, your topic will be chosen for our next broadcast. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that episode. For more information, visit me at DeannaHoldren.com. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Deanna Holdren. I really want to hear from you, so message me. I love taking your messages and creating topics from them. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share my show with those who have an interest in health and wellness. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.